Welcome to Music and Medicine. Welcome to Music and Medicine. Welcome to Music and Medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Moshe Lewis. Welcome to Music and Medicine. I'm really excited and delighted today to be with Nolan Sheehan. He is a master trumpeter and also master level Olympian. He runs incredible distances and has broken so many records that we just couldn't have a better connection between music and medicine. So welcome, my friend. Well, thank you. It's glad. I'm glad to be here. Sure, absolutely. Um, I want to go back to just starting out and, and picking the trumpet as an instrument because you have a modesty about you, but you've worked with Miles Davis, Duke Ellington, people of that nature, Aretha Franklin. I mean, it's just incredible. So how did that all get started? I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky and very grateful that, uh, uh, I'm not sure how much talent I have, <laughs> okay. but, uh, but I have uh, a very good propensity for stick sticking to something and, mm -hmm. and working it out, you know. Right. So uh, uh, when I first started playing the trumpet, I was 12 years old, right. and, uh, and I loved it, you know. And, and it became my life. And uh, I think I heard Louis Armstrong or somebody on the radio, and I said, wow, I want to do that. So I asked my mom if I could uh, play the trumpet. And she said, well, let me talk to your dad. And so they uh, got together, and they said, yeah, we, we'll get you a trumpet. I got my trumpet and I, uh, oh, I just took off. I, I practiced, you know, all day and I was like, like uh, really into it. And I was in the school band and then the boys club band and, and uh, really uh, kind of took off with music. It was sure. uh, a great thing in my life. Absolutely. Now, meeting somebody like Miles Davis, how did that come about? I mean, that's just not somebody you just sort of run into on a, a set, so to speak. Right. Well, you know, I've been very fortunate in that uh, when I got out of high school, I uh, went into the Army, mm -hmm. and I was stationed at a place called Fort Irwin, which was uh, a fort that was in the middle of the Mojave Desert, and it was being deactivated. So basically what happened was that they were deactivating the fort, so we showed up in the morning at 6 o'clock for a roll call, and then we were off until the next six o'clock in the morning, roll we'll call. Oh, wow. So a lot of guys went into LA, a lot of guys did whatever they wanted to do, but I just practiced all day and all day and all day. I practiced all the time. So I, I had my chops together. So when I got out of the army, um, went to school, I, uh, I was very prepared you know, for, uh, to be a professional. And when I became a professional, uh, uh, I was very lucky. Uh, the first job I had was with Aretha Franklin, the first major job. And then I started working with guys like Count Basie and, uh, and Duke and all that kind of stuff. It was, uh, it was just great. You know, I was, I was prepared. Right. You know, I was prepared to, uh, to do that sort of thing. So uh, to me, it wasn't so much, you know, I'm working with this guy, I'm working with that lady. Mm -hmm. It was more like a, it's a gig, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's business. And this is what I do. This is what I want to do. So this is what I did. Sure. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, all along, you continue to run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you would challenge some of your teammates and yeah. people on the band and things like uh -huh. that to running and yeah. basically whip their yeah. <laughs> butts <laughs> to be polite. Yeah, that was a good thing. You know, the trumpet was the main thing in my life when sure. I was in school. But uh, I remember one year, uh, my grades went down. Mm -hmm. And my dad said, you know, you, uh, we're not going to let you run track mm -hmm. next year until you get your grades up, right. you know. And I remember all of a sudden my trumpet playing went down, mm -hmm. you know. And it wasn't, uh, I didn't have the uh, endurance that I had before. I didn't have the, the, the range, you know, playing the high notes and stuff. And so uh, my trumpet teacher, whose name was Bob Rithholler, great man, he says, it's probably because you're not running. So if you start running, you'll probably uh, uh, be a better trumpet player. Sure. So I started running on my own, and sure enough, my trumpet playing started getting better. And I uh, started running more. My trumpet playing got better. It was all about right. the trumpet. Right, right, everything. You know? Yeah. And then I started realizing that, wow, I'm a pretty good runner. 
Sure. And then I started uh, 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 running a lot and, and uh, started entering races, and some of them paid money, so that was good. Right. And the, the good thing is, like, when I was in Marvin Gaye's band, right. uh, uh, I used to have, like, a little little scam that I used to do. <laughs> right. And, you know, yeah, it's funny because if you... Say you say you run a four minute mile. Right. Okay. Right. Which is not something everybody runs, by the way. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's seven minutes, and, and I used to be at seven. And I'm at <laughs> nine to eleven. Okay. So it's something. It's you know, well, not you, an easy thing. Yeah, to run a four it's not mile. easy thing, right? But if you keep on running, if you don't stop, right, then uh, you know you can get around that four minute. You know. Right. But people don't realize that once you stop running. Mm -hmm. You can't get back into it at the same level. It's like boxing, sure. it's like any anything. Sport, right. Yeah, any sport, right. you know. Once you stop, no matter how good you are, right. you're not going to get back close to where you were before you stopped. So I used to challenge everybody, you know, mm -hmm. uh, like five or six guys to a, like a, a mile race. They could do a, a relay and they could run as many times as they want to run, you know. I'll just do it by myself. But, you know, guys just said, you know, I was in college, I ran a, you know, a quarter in, 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 in 48 seconds. Yeah, but that was like 10 years ago, exactly. you know, right. so like, you know, it was a scam because I, sure. could, I couldn't lose, you know. And then I started uh, racing the guys individually and, right. and uh, beating them just by a little bit, you know, so they think, well, wow, if I run this a little faster, maybe I can get, it's a scam, you know, but it was, it was fun. It's something time. that I really enjoyed time. doing. Sure. And I want to, because it, the show does have a medical bent to it, I want to tease that out a little bit. Cool. Did, did you sense that the running actually sort of increased your endurance, your wind capacity, your ability really literally to blow? Oh, with, without with a doubt. Strength? Without a doubt, without a doubt, mm -hmm. yeah. And that's why, I, one of the reasons why I run now. It makes right. my, uh, my trumpet playing uh, easier. And you know, I, I have, uh, uh, I don't eat every day. You know, I uh, sometimes I eat like three meals a week, and, uh, and at the most I'll eat one meal a day after I run. Mm -hmm. So if I run, if I do like a nine mile run or a ten mile run or whatever, then I'll eat my one meal after that. Sure. And before that, it's just water. Right. And I just want to highlight the master's records because a lot of times people that listen to this may think we're talking about stuff in the past. Right. You started breaking a lot of records over the age of 40. And like you right. already said, you ran, you're still running to this day. I mean, you've been written up in the New York Times all over the place. Talk to us about sort of that level of competition and continuing to run in your 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond. You know, when I was uh, uh, in my 30s, uh, I... Uh, wanted to do, you know, like uh, run internationally uh, with the big boys. But I was, uh, in my 30s, I think I was with Marvin Gaye. I just left Count Basie. And so I never got an opportunity to run, you know, with, with, uh, with uh, the international group. But then I found out about the master's program, which is for men and women over the age of, at that time, I think it was 35. And I couldn't wait to turn 35 so that I can become a master, because now you got competition. And it's in five, uh, year age groups. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you turn 40, you're running against 40 year olds. But when you turn 45, you're running against 45 year olds. Mm -hmm. So it, it, the bar it never lowers and it never it's mm -hmm. all the same. So I started uh, uh, breaking records when I was uh, uh, 40, and uh, I've been setting records uh, ever since. Which is you know, just I've been very uh, very fortunate to sure. have been able to do that. Incredible. Um, and I would be remiss if we didn't just take a little bit more time, especially when you mentioned people like Marvin Gaye mm -hmm. um, and Duke Ellington. Tell us just about Duke. I mean, you just have this sense not only of perfectionism, but a lot of rehearsing, a lot of practicing, mm -hmm. um, and of course a lot of performances, but yes. music that still to this day, sophisticated lady, black and blue, are still legendary. Yes. Just talk to us, your sense of, of the man and the work, and I, I know at times it must have been more than just a gig. Right. Let me combine Duke and Basie and right. Lionel Hampton because sure, okay. those were basically the same guy right. you know right. and it, it's basically it's the same band you know all three of those guys they had a very I was very fortunate to be to have been able to work with them they were all like uh, like like father figures mm -hmm. very classy you know very wonderful people you know the music is at a, a very very high level there wasn't a lot of practice rehearsal because in order to be in those bands, playing with Duke or with Basie or with Lionel Hampton, you had to be amongst the best. So uh, there wasn't a lot of rehearsing, but when you get on the bandstand, you know that it's going to be some great music. I mean, it was great. We traveled all over the world. 
all over the world, and people just loved us, and it, uh, it was great. But uh, everything that you think that Duke was, that's what he was. Mm -hmm. Everything that you imagine that Basie was, or, or Lionel Hampton was, that's the way they were. They were very wonderful men. Uh, they all called me young blood because I was very young when I worked with them, especially right. in Duke's band. I was very young. Sure. Basie's band, I was a little older. I, I think I was in my uh, early 20s, mm -hmm. you know. And um, Hap, actually later than that. But uh, they called me young blood and they looked out for me, you know. I'm very fortunate in that I have never, ever in my life been high. Mm -hmm. And I'm a jazz musician. Right. I've never, so, yeah. like, I've never a smoked a joint. I've right. never, uh, uh, did, of course, the hard stuff like cocaine or and that stuff. But I've right. never smoked a cigarette. I've never drunk alcohol and stuff. And it's mainly because of the people like, like, uh, like Duke, mm -hmm. and like uh, Basie and Hampton look out for you. Sure. You know, they, they make sure that uh, you know that you're in the right direction. And Marvin Gaye too. Mm -hmm. I think Marvin Gaye was one of the main reasons why I never even decided to try it. Sure. Because Marvin Gaye uh, uh, instilled in me that uh, I have a personality that is very addictive. I have an addictive personality, you know, practice eight hours a day, sure. run 12 miles a day, mm -hmm. eat one meal a day, you know. Uh, so if I started, right. I wouldn't be able to stop mm -hmm. if I really liked it. And Marvin Gaye knew that, and he let me know, don't even try it. Don't even experiment. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to last. Because Marvin had the same type of personality yeah. that I had. He saved my life by letting me know, you know. So all those guys are, are, are the same, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Marvin and, and I worked with Stevie Wonder, and, you know, they're, they're all the same. They're all these beautiful people that I admire. And that it was a pleasure working with all those people. Sure. And let's juxtapose that to somebody like Aretha Franklin coming yeah. sort of from a different type of a background and mm -hmm. working with her and things like that. She brings this ass yeah. and she, yeah. it's a little bit different. Yeah. Um, how was that experience and oh, what did you learn from her? Aretha was great. You know, Aretha is, um, everybody knows her as being a soul singer right. and, you know, the queen of soul or, or whatever they, they, they call it and stuff. But she was a very accomplished piano player mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and a very good businesswoman. See, back in those days, you know, you get like a, Dinah Washington, and, and you get uh, 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 Ella Fitzgerald. You know, I worked with Ella, and I worked with Sarah Vaughn. Those women are very, very strong women. They had to be because it's a man's world, basically, right. especially back then. And so if you are, you let your guard down just a little bit, some guy is going to overrun you. You have to be very strong. You know, sometimes you had to use some profanity to let them know that you're not playing around. Right, right, right. And they had no problems using profanity to let you know right. that, uh, you know, that they're in charge and they're mm -hmm. going to take care of that. But Aretha was, uh, she was great. She was a, a great woman. She uh, 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 was a great piano player, a great musician, and uh, didn't take no mess. And her musical director, his name was H.B. Barnum, mm -hmm. and a great man. Great man. I think next to my father, he's probably one of the greatest influences uh, in, in my life. Still yeah. around now. Right. You know, still doing music too. Right. Mm -hmm. The show's called Music and Medicine. So we've been talking about all this health stuff and yes. these amazingly great people that you've worked with. Mm -hmm. And yet, you have this incredible story about cancer and yes. how you've been fighting it yes. currently. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about how you first discovered it and the circumstances behind that. Okay, it's very interesting. Like I said before, everything revolves around my running. I just like to run. And, and I almost always win. And I hate to say it like that, but, but it's true. I, I, I've, been very for, I've been very fortunate, you know. So I ran a, a race last year. And uh, it was against guys my age, actually. And, and I came in third, and I've never come in third before, you know, and I, 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 I was trying. And after the race, I was uh, lightheaded, and my breathing, uh, uh, I had troubles catching my breath. So I, uh, I went to the clinic, because I was uh, getting tested for, um, for COVID every week, because I was uh, coaching, and I didn't want to be around the kids and not be uh, tested, so we tested every week. Or was it two weeks? I can't remember. So I went to the yeah, I went to the clinic and I said, uh, you know, oh by the way, I uh, I've been having trouble breathing and I feel kind of lightheaded. And the nurse looked at me and said, 
You need to go to Huntington Memorial Hospital right now. Go to emergency. I'm going to call them right now and tell them that you're on your way and tell them that, you've had, that you're having trouble breathing and that you're feeling lightheaded. So I went down there, and they told me that I had um, a pulmonary um, um, uh, blood clots in my lungs. Right, right. So, uh, and I said, oh, by the way, I got this lump here on my neck, you know? And uh, they said, well, let's, uh, let's take a look at that. So uh, she put a scope down my throat, and she says, you know, it doesn't look good to me. It looks like it's cancer. Right. And I'm thinking, no, not me. I'm not a right. candidate for cancer, because right. I had never been sick. Right, wow. I had okay. never been sick. Never had a cold, never had the flu, headache. None of that. Wow. Yeah. Maybe a lot of people need to start eating less meals a week. Right, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it, it works really well, yeah. So I, uh, I, I was, uh, I didn't think, uh, you know, that the prognosis was, was right. So I, uh, I uh, she said, well, let me take a, a biopsy. biopsy. So they did a biopsy. She came back. She said, yes, you've got cancer on the back of your tongue. And so I thought, wow, that's a, you know. So I said, well, what are my options for that? And she started telling me the options, you know, well, we can cut your tongue out. See, that's not going to be a, option. an option for me because I'm a, I'm a trumpet player, you know, and I, and I like to kiss my wife. Sure. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> you know, so that was an option. Then she started talking about uh, chemo, and, and I had always thought that if there's any cure for cancer, it has to come from within the body. It has to come from your... Uh, uh, immune system, right. you know, and so I know that chemo completely destroys the immune system. Right. So I didn't want to do that because uh, I need that. I can't fight sure. the treatment and fight the cancer at the same time. Right. At least in my mind, that's what I was thinking. Sure. And then they uh, said uh, 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 radiation, but the radiation it might cause me to go deaf or I lose uh, hearing in my ear, which is not an option for me. And then I can lose my uh, salivary gland uh, function. And that's not an option for me. So I, I decided to do some checking, and I found out that Mexico had some uh, alternative treatment. So I went down right. to Mexico, right. and, and it worked really well. You know, the, uh, the cancer shrunk, the lymph nodes were pretty much uh, gone, right. and, uh, and it worked out well for me. I stayed there for uh, uh, about three weeks, and as I was leaving, the doctor says, we'd like you to stay a little bit longer. And I said, well, the program it was supposed to be for three weeks, and I got to, you know, I got some gigs, right. you know? and you know, insurance didn't take care of it, so sure. it was pretty expensive. So I went back home, and I, after about a month and a half, the uh, the lymph nodes started to get a little bit bigger, and I could start feeling the cancer in my throat again. So I went back to Mexico this time for twice as long right. to uh, to get it taken care of. You know? sure. So uh, uh, that's basically where I am now. Sure. Sure, absolutely. So when you hear the words, um, which is our key name of the show, music and medicine, what yeah. does it mean to you? Because your life and everything you do so are so emblematic of that. Yeah, you know, health is uh, next to to running and music. Health is is my primary goal. You know, I, I'm only eating one meal a day maximum to uh, uh, to prolong life and to uh, to maintain. Uh, a healthy environment. Uh, uh, so I do a lot of things, you know, sacrifices, but it's not really a sacrifice, it's a way of life. I've always ate, eaten uh, organically, mm -hmm. always. It's more expensive, but it's the way I like to do it. You know, if my wife doesn't cook it, I don't eat it. So we don't go out to eat, you know, unless it's completely necessary. If I'm on the road or something, that's a, a, a difference. But uh, I don't eat uh, things unless I know where it was grown. And, and, and uh, I eat uh, chicken and, and, uh, and fish if I know where it was raised. And I eat those things because I'm a, com a competitor. Sure. And, and you have to have some type of a carnal uh, uh, nature yeah. if you're going to be running against people. Yeah. When I was a vegan, it was good. I felt great. But sure. I remember uh, a couple of times I let people beat me, although I, I knew I could beat them. But they wanted it, you know. And this guy's trying so hard. I'll let right. him win. I'll that's, you. Yeah, yeah. That's not what a champion right. uh, should feel when he's running. He should sure. say, oh, I'm going to run. Uh, right. I'm going to win. So I noticed when I ate some chicken, then uh, uh, I, uh, I I had that you know that thing. I'm not like a Mike Tyson. I'm sure, not, I don't right. want to kill him. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know? yeah, but uh, 
uh, you know, it, 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 it lets me have that little edge that I need to be a, a champion. Sure. So, uh, but uh, yeah, medicine uh, and uh, uh, music, it's my life, sure. it's my Absolutely. life. Clearly. Mm -hmm. Perfect words. Um, mm -hmm. Thanks so much. Your story is so heartwarming, and yet um, you're so sweet. Oh, thank uh, you so and to much put out that. all that work uh, and then continue to run to the extent you do still to this day, I think it's a lesson for all of us in terms of eating healthier yeah. um, and sometimes not eating. Right. And then also um, certainly taking care of yourself, which uh, you do by exercising regularly. So thanks so much. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Sure. I've been your host, Dr. Moshe Lewis. It's amazing to hear the story of someone, and I purposely want to talk a little bit about his musical career, how extensive that's been, and how many decades he's been in the business, uh, going back to you know legends you know of our time and even before our time, uh, like Duke Ellington and Miles Davis, and then bringing it forward to someone who's still continuing to um, play and still plays the trumpet, but also exercises probably beyond the average person his age, way more, and certainly the sacrifices that he makes in terms of his diet. But more importantly, to juxtapose that with dealing with cancer real time. It's something that all of us have a family member or somebody we know or have a fear of possibly we could get it. How would we deal with this? And for him, he really defined exactly specific goals that were not an option. He was not going to have a surgery, he was not going to have chemo. And so I think there's a lot to learn here about being open to alternative medicine, being open to other ideas, taking care of yourself, and continuing to boost your immune system and exercise um, regardless of the diagnosis you have. And ideally, certainly trying to live a healthy life and continue to give, which he does. Thanks so much for joining us. Welcome to Music and Medicine. Welcome to Music and Medicine. Welcome to Music and Medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Moshe Lewis. 